What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Alicia Nicole. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of 80s RX 4MD. So honestly, I have been struggling with staying on top of recording these clerkship videos. Um, I have not yet released a video on my psych or my neuro clerkships. Um, so I was like, I could just like combine them together. So I'm going to talk about neuro first. Um, both of these were four week clerkships. There's a lot of overlap you'll see in the questions as well as, you know, you may have a differential diagnosis um, for psych in your neurology module and vice versa. So they're very closely related. Okay, so neuro was four weeks long. We had two weeks inpatient, two weeks outpatient. I started on the inpatient side. Um, inpatient, you had one week of vascular neurology and then one week of general neurology. So I started on general. With general neurology, essentially you are covering every potential neurologic complaint. Um, so it could be a patient has sudden onset weakness. The general neuro team is gonna be called to evaluate them and see if it really is neurologic in nature, um, do whatever tests, um, get whatever blood work, um, imaging, all of that stuff. It was kind of unpredictable because there are some patients that are already admitted for things that we are managing, but it also would kind of just depend what would come in the door. Um, so it wasn't necessarily like, oh, we're always going to have X amount of patients and these are, you know, the patients that we have every single day. It really just could change every day. In terms of the hours, I want to say I was working like maybe seven-ish to four-ish, roughly. Um, and it would depend, especially the end time would depend on like how many patients there were and what really came up during the day. Um, while I was on general neurology, I did have a decent amount of time to study, get practice questions done, um, aquifer cases. Aquifer will be the death of me. Uh, so that was really good. Pretty much every day I got all of my practice questions done, like while I was in the hospital. Um, and then vascular neurology. So this is the team that responds to the stroke codes. That's pretty much their sole purpose. And then they continue managing the patients um, that do end up being deemed a stroke, um, you know, getting their anticoagulants on board and all that stuff. Um, so that also was a good time to get practice questions done because again, it really just depends what comes in when. And so you would hear over the intercom, stroke code to the emergency room, we would be the team that would go down there. Um, the residents would do uh, like an initial assessment of things like if they knew their names, like their orientation, um, if there was like asymmetry of their face or their strength and their extremities, um, look to see if there's any like obvious cortical signs, things like that. And it would go very quickly. Like when they call a stroke code, okay, we get down there while they're willing them in, the resident is starting the assessment and then we're taking them straight to imaging to get a CT because you need to determine do you see anything hemorrhagic or not because if not then and they're within the right time frame then you can give them TPA but if you do see something hemorrhagic TPA is contraindicated so that's like the first question that you have to answer is like is this a hemor is there anything hemorrhagic going on um, and then there's other factors too that matter I think like if they've had any kind of like brain surgery if they've had any kind of like bleeding within a certain period of time like I said I'm kind of far removed from neuro but there's a whole like criteria that like um would basically make someone ineligible to receive TPA but otherwise you just always get TPA on board even if you find out later like oh this wasn't a stroke um because you'd rather just like get that started and so my job as the med student was typically like after they've done their initial assessment, after they've gotten their imaging and they go to their like temporary room in the emergency department would be helping to get like the rest of their information. So their past medical history, surgical history, family history, maybe get a little bit more about what actually happened. We'll just go um, and kind of share what I found with the resident. And that was pretty much what vascular neurology looked like. Um, coming into neuro, I was like terrified just because my neuro module, like in the first two years was probably almost a year prior to when I was doing the clerkship and neuro is one of those subjects that is just, it's really challenging. There's a lot to it. 
Um, there's a lot of where does this decasade and where does this synapse and what's going to be contralateral, what's going to be ipsilateral. And if there's this like set of symptoms, localized lesion, it's very intimidating. And for me, it was pretty challenging. So I was just like nervous about diving back into the world of neuro. But I really found that clinically, neuro was a lot more straightforward than I was expecting it to be. That's not to say it's easy. But I think seeing certain patterns over and over and over really like solidified things in my head. So really it did kind of, the pieces were coming together relatively quickly. Like I was worried because it was only four weeks that like I would not really get the hang of things before the clerkship ended. Um, but I felt pretty comfortable, I'd say by like week two. Um, so then outpatient. So with outpatient um, clinic, we essentially spent a half day with different providers and um, each one kind of has a different specialty. So they all have done a neurology residency, but then they kind of did fellowships and other things. So like you might spend the morning with an MS specialist um, who sees MS or diseases that present similarly to MS. Um, and then you might spend the afternoon with one of the um, movement disorder specialists who sees like Parkinson's, um, all the Parkinson's plus syndromes, Huntington's, things like that. Then you might spend the next day with um, someone who deals with um, like adult seizure disorders. And then you might spend the afternoon with someone who deals with pediatric seizure disorders. Um, so that was actually really cool to kind of just see the different areas of neurology that you can go into. That was a pretty good experience. In terms of hours, it was pretty similar, like 7.30, 8 start time to like 3.30 or 4. Um, so neurology overall was a clerkship that had pretty decent hours. Like I said, the knowledge really came back a lot faster than I was expecting it to. Um, and, um, it was a pretty decent experience, honestly. So I will just go ahead and talk about, um, what resources I use. For the most part, I just used UWorld and did questions every day. But for neuro, I did also use boards and beyond because, like I said, coming in, I did feel a little bit, like, far removed from neuro. And so I wanted to relearn some of the content and I wanted to relearn it kind of more in the clinical setting. So um, if you didn't know, Boards and Beyond has two memberships. There's the preclinical, which is for step one, and then the clinical, which is for step two and step three. I have the clinical membership now. And so the way the videos are structured and even the content that's in the videos is you'll notice is different. The step one membership, it's a lot of um, like basic science, whereas this really is just kind of hey, this is the basic pathophys, this is how it presents, this is how we treat it or assess for it. And so it's very like high yield and kind of straightforward. So I really, really, really appreciated that. Um, and that's it. Oh, so let me quickly tell you about the expectations. Um, so for general, um, general neurology, um, I would usually just see one patient and then present that patient during rounds. And then for vascular neurology, um, it was mostly, like I said, just kind of going down to those stroke codes. So for psych, this uh, clerkship was also four weeks long. Um, this one was different because we stayed with the same attending the whole time, which I actually really liked, especially with it being a shorter clerkship because you get evaluations at the end of every clerkship and if someone was only with you for one or two days, they're not gonna have anything substantial to say about you. And really those comments in the end of clerkship evaluation are what, basically what matters later when it comes down to like residency applications. So we had the same attending the whole time. Um, we had weekly didactic, so lectures, as well as quizzes. Um, that was the same for neuro as well. Um, what was uh, interesting, so our whole psychiatry clerkship is all inpatient psych. There's no outpatient management. Um, we were seeing like uh, schizophrenia spectrum disorders, um, bipolar disorders, uh, some severe depression, um, all sorts of things, honestly. Um, this was really interesting because we had the opportunity to go to court and see the whole process of like a petition being submitted and then the judge kind of listening to the story and making a determination about, you know, what's recommended, um, kind of based on the psychiatrist's 
um, recommendations. Um, we went, I went three times actually, just because my attending told me to, um, but not everyone went as many times as I did and, and court was usually in the morning on a Tuesday. So that was really interesting. A lot of cases you saw people kind of being transitioned from inpatient to outpatient commitment, but there were some where it's like, okay, someone submitted a petition. Now we are moving them to inpatient commitment. The hours were pretty much, I'd say like seven to like 3.30 or four o'clock. This clerkship, this was the first time that I was expected to actually follow four patients at a time. So um, we did that and we would see them in the morning, pre-round on them before meeting with the attending and then present the patients to the attending and then round with the attending. Um, and then we were responsible for completing the notes on those patients we saw. We didn't do any notes on neuro. Um, but for psych, yeah, we were expected to complete those notes. And um, after a while, it made sense because there's a certain template you follow and you know what questions to ask and things like that. So the first day I was a little bit like, oh my goodness, I'm going to be following four patients. But um, it started to make sense and I kind of got in the groove of things pretty quickly. Um, and we would do kind of a basic assessment. We would usually ask like how their mood is and compare that to their affect, which is what we're perceiving. Um, and that's important because some psychiatric conditions can cause a flat affect like schizophrenia. Um, and so like if a patient tells you I'm feeling great today, but they're like, I'm feeling great today. You would say they reported their mood as quote, I'm feeling great today, but for their affect, you might say restricted or flat or something like that. So that you know, there's kind of like, they're incongruent. Um, so their mood, you would perceive them. Um, you would just ask about like paranoid thoughts if they think anyone's out to get them, anxious thoughts, um, uh, suicidal thoughts. You would ask about intention to hurt yourself, hurt anyone else. Um, you would ask, I'm trying to remember, suicidal, anxious, paranoid, intention. Um, and then if like, if they're a patient that has had pretty like uh, prominent delusions, you might ask about that. Now you don't have to ask about that every single day, especially early in their treatment, because if they've been off their meds for who knows how long and we're just restarting them, they probably won't be completely better tomorrow. So these were usually patients that you were going to be following. Like most of the patients that were there when I started were there when I finished. So we would like ask maybe after a week or a week and a half, like, oh, you know, when you came in, you said you thought that uh, there was a yellow man in the closet that was um, poisoning your food. Do you still think that? And just kind of see where they are. And there were some people that they were going to have some degree of delusions, um, at baseline but at that point you want to see are they going to act on these delusions are they going to be a danger to themselves or anyone else and if the answer is no like if, if they're like yeah that mel that yellow man is still there and we ask like what are you going to do about it oh nothing he doesn't really bother me then you know assuming that the rest of their symptoms have resolved that would be a person that might be ready to go home so yes saw four patients a day wrote the notes um we were expected to do like new psychiatric intake evaluations, which are much more comprehensive. You do like a typical asking about past medical history, family history, social history, surgical history, all that stuff. You do pay close attention to any histories of psychiatric illness or hospitalizations, any drug abuse, things like that. Um, and then you also want to talk about like physical abuse, sexual abuse. It's just very comprehensive. And at first it was very overwhelming to collect the information, but more so to document it appropriately. Um, but after a while, I think we got the hang of that as well. In terms of resources, truly psychiatry was one of those clerkships where I did not need anything except UWorld. Um, in terms of like published resources. Now, our clerkship director did make a really, really, really helpful um, high yield psychiatry shelf um, PowerPoint that we went over at the end of the clerkship with him. And that was really helpful. But I did feel like by the time I got to the end of the clerkship, I felt pretty solid. Um, you world I always forget something, Divine Intervention Podcast. I don't know that I have mentioned him in my prior videos, but I started listening to his shelf um, high yield review videos, probably like the second half of the year. So starting in January. Um, so for surgery, for neuro, for psych, um, and for peds, I found his um, 
high yield videos to be very helpful. And I know for a fact there were questions that I got right on the shelf exam from listening to his podcast. So you world, divine intervention, um, that was literally the mainstay of what studying looked like for me. Um, psych was interesting because it's one of those clerkships that people in general do well on and so the curve is much higher than usual. So I was a little bit nervous at first, not because I didn't think I would do well, but it was like this curve is like way higher than it usually is, but I did really well on the um, shelf exam. If I'm remembering correctly, it was actually my highest score, which I was kind of surprised by. Um, but I think that pretty much brings me to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.